All right, uh, we got uh, AW ratings and news. Yeah, well, I mean, just the thing on the on the ratings, you know, I mean, like, and I talked about this with you. I talked about it even more with Garrett. I mean, the it's really been only a four week thing, which has to do. It is the four weeks that they've gone against the playoffs, but the four week thing with this uh, eighteen to thirty four number being so low, unbelievably low. Um, and, you know, as far as like the reason, if you, if you take that away and just throw out that and compare the other thing, the other numbers, um, you know, actually the ratings would be exactly what they were before, you know, even with against the, against the uh, playoffs. Um, if you throw that out and they would have done a normal number, they would have done, you know, 0. 0.28, 0. 0.29, 0.29 and 0.28 the last four weeks and if they were doing those numbers um a year ago or this year against the nba playoffs people would be going that's fine you know it's not great it's not wonderful but it's fine the whole drop is that one category and it's been you know only a couple weeks and i don't know why it's and it's it's you know you can go in there and say oh it's the nba playoffs um, and that is, is, of course, a small part of it. But the drop is way too big. I mean, you don't, you know, you're literally this last week almost cut in half, you know, from, you know, in the 150,000 range that they would normally do to 82,000. Not quite in half, but it's almost in half. And males were actually cut more in half because the women didn't drop as much. Um, you know, I mean, they did 45,000 men. And, you know, that's a, that's a number where they're usually... 90 to, to 115 ish and they did 45 this last week so there's that's the whole you know that's the whole problem right there and of course that's the, you know and there's no drop in canada even though they're going at the same playoffs in canada the canadian numbers have been fine so there is a and it's it's the hardest group to draw from in many ways right now and the it's it's the most valuable group you know, most valuable age group. So it's a very tough thing, especially because they're still in negotiations. This is like the worst time for this to happen, but it did. And as far as like, you know, people have been telling me all this stuff, oh, you know, this and this and this, but every one of these things everyone's been telling me is stuff that's been going on for three years, four years, you know? I mean, the booking in this way, this booking isn't like something that, the booking didn't change four weeks ago. Um, the character mix didn't change four weeks ago. I mean, you know, Tony Khan definitely did that, uh, um, you know, the thing with the neck brace at the NFL thing and the Weinstein and all that. But I can't believe that that's the reason. And obviously they've been doing the, the Young Buck storyline. Um, and I don't think that that's the reason either. But, you know, perhaps, you know, I mean, that that is something that changed if there's anything that changed in the show. But it hasn't been the whole show. But whatever it is, um, there's something, you know, you know, I was saying, like, it's not cool. And, and you know, people were taking that all wrong and totally misinterpreting, as always, totally misinterpreting what I said. It's a way to explain why one age group, and of the most important, is down significantly, while everything else is not down at all. So, I mean, the whole point is, it's like... If you want to panic and there's this thing that's turning all these people off, it's only turning... I mean, are they turning some people off in every age group? A little, of course, you always do. You always do. Do the playoffs hurt? Of course they do. They always do. But this is more than that. Well, I, I do think that one thing that we should do is is look when the playoffs are over. Well, that's two more weeks. Because, yeah, it, it's bigger than usual here, but until the playoffs end and we see whether it goes back to normal or not, we actually don't know if it's just a larger-than-average interest in that age group in the playoffs than it has been in years past or if it's something else. Well, that's, well that wouldn't be it because the play, NBA playoffs are actually down. And um, on Wednesday, the playoffs were down. God damn. I have the number in the observer. It's like the playoffs the the playoffs were down way 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 more more year to year than AEW was. I know that on Wednesday AEW was down 18% from the year before and the top 10 shows on cable were down 27% and the top 30 shows were down 23%. So cable itself 
is down more than AEW or was this last Wednesday when AEW did what I would call I would call Wednesday uh, a bad rating, all things considered. Um, some of the other weeks I wouldn't say were bad. They were expected, but definitely bad in the one demo. But, um, you know, I mean, like, look, there's people who, and, and it's a valid argument about certain things. Number one, like, like you got two schools on AEW right now, you know, and, and they're both reactionary, okay? The one school is, is they're dying, they're dying. And really, you know, or they're collapsing. And really, again, Aside from 18 to 34, there there's not even a drop. They're they're doing I mean, they're doing what you would expect against the playoffs. They're gonna be down. That's okay. But even with the playoffs, even when you factor that in, um, among all the shows uh last week, I I don't know this week, so I'll know this week's in the middle, you know, when this when the Saturday and Sunday numbers come out. But the week before, they were third among all shows other than sports on cable for the entire week which is much better than they were doing a year before. It's much better than they were doing two years before. So as far as the rankings, as far as, you know, in their category and cable, they're higher than they were before. At the same time, um, they're lower than you want to be negotiating this new contract because it is a big drop year to year. I mean, it's like if you had a 5% drop year to year, everyone, you know, they would go fine. And granted, yes, what I just said is, is like, cable as a whole is down is down more than they are which is true you know but um you know i mean as far as like the entertainment shows and everything like that but still it's not a good thing in your contract year to be down but um yeah i, I think that um i think that you know yes waiting for the nba playoffs to be over but still it's not like like i said it's like the NBA playoffs themselves are way, way down from the year before. Well, they so are, not... but you're talking a much larger group of people watching the NBA playoffs than are watching AEW. So way more. AEW's, way more. AEW's 18, to 30, 18 to 34 drop, I mean, it's not necessarily going to be the exact same percentage dropping there as dropped watching the NBA year over year. I mean, you could but still NBA, have but, but, a but large NBA... number of 18 to 34 AEW viewers that have decided, we want to watch the playoffs this year, right? even the if NBA... the playoffs are down. But the playoffs are way down, but especially last You still Wednesday. could have people doing that. Yeah, we'll yeah. find out in two weeks. We'll find out in two weeks. Yeah, yes. this week this week is a bad one for AEW because um, they've got uh, both NBA, um, they got the NBA and they've got the NHL on Wednesday. Uh, Raw, Raw has uh, one more week with the NBA playoffs, it's not this week. It'll be the week after, the 27th. This week, they have no NBA. They do have an NHL game. So, in theory, Raw should be better than it's been in several weeks. NXT has, um, I don't, NXT has no NBA this week, but uh, AEW still does. Um, after that, after this week, I think that there's, um, oh, God, there's not, there's not, there might, might only be one left. For a for for AEW and it depends, um, you know, as far as the Wednesdays. I mean, there'll be weekend games and stuff too. You know, against uh, you know Friday. Now Friday, they're they're actually in a bad time slot because they're in six thirty on Friday night, uh, three thirty Eastern, preceding the NBA game. Um, so I don't think they'll be going against the NBA. Um, you know, and it's on the same station. Um, if they were on right after, it would be beneficial. I think they're going to do a replay real late at night, but um, it's so late at night, it's not going to be a factor or anything like that. And then um, I haven't looked up Saturday yet, how Saturday, what Saturday goes against. But Saturday's, Saturday always has, you know, big competition. So it's, it's you're never going to have a Saturday without a lot of competition. Well, I will say one thing, and that is that you mentioned earlier when people were talking about issues they had with the booking or this or that, that it was exactly the same as it was years ago. And uh, that that is true. No, not everything. Not everything's the same. But I'm just saying that the way he oh, books is the okay, same. Okay. Well. Okay. Well. No. Well. No. Nah, I mean, it's the same. Well, there. The one no, difference no, is no. he does. No. He no. Does no. Less no. long term. No. There booking. was more long term. There's more long term. He, he used to before. book uh, much more long term. But in terms of, you always know who's going to win the matches. Foregone conclusion. But, 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 most, most of the time. Most of the time. But that's the same with WWE, and but, it's the same with our wrestling. Well, forget WWE. Here's my point. Yeah. There are a lot of things that are the same as a few years ago, okay? 
But if you're talking about the 18-34 to 34 audience, if there actually is a problem here after the playoffs are over, one thing about, you know, people's complaints about the booking and that sort of thing is if you're doing the exact same thing booking-wise that you were doing three years ago or whatever, you know, 18-34 to 34 is your fickle audience. You know? Absolutely. They, if they're not getting what they want, they're out of here. Whereas if you look at 18 to 49 or 50 plus, I would say that most of those viewers have probably been watching wrestling for a long time and they've lived through a lot of shit and they're going to be a lot more tolerant of things that bother them than a younger audience. You're right. You're right. Except the thing is, is that if I go back about six weeks, it was fine. Well, that's what I'm saying. I believe it's, 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 I believe it's, in a few weeks it's going to largely return to the normal well, we'll eighteen to thirty four. Well, if I've it doesn't, seen, then there's a real conversation. I, to have. I, I've never, I've never seen it drop like this though. I mean, even you haven't. But what makes more sense that it was a huge drop, or that there was something that happened four weeks ago that all of a sudden drove all these people off of wrestling? I mean, oh, it makes it's, more it's, sense. It's, it's, it's an it's, unusual drop. Yeah, if it was, if it was one week or two weeks. I would say that. That's why I never brought it up until... But like, we're still in the playoffs. True. And, and the further we go, the bigger the drop should be because the, the playoffs, playoffs get more interesting the longer they go on. That's true. So, That's true. That's true, but it shouldn't be... It should... Like, you know, the playoffs or anything like this, that may drop you 15%. I mean, it usually usually it's more like 5 to 10, but it can drop you 15%. But this is something weird. And... But it comes, but also, this goes at the same time as the attendance drop, you know. Um, well, I mean, listen, the there the are certainly been, problems. The, the <laughs> there atten- are certainly things the that are attendance, driving the, off fans yeah, to a degree. Not, yeah, yeah. But the 18 the to 34 the, gigantic drop may be something different. Well, I think it's partially. that's Because that's your audience that goes to the shows more than older audience. I mean, there are people over 35 who go to shows, of course. But... Um, you know, your 25 to 35 has always been, um, you know, one of your prime audiences. And and at the same time, um, WWE, you know, it is it is a switch in the sense that WWE is super strong with that group. And that also used to be AEW's strongest group. I mean, WWE, I mean, AEW for a long time was going neck and neck with Raw and sometimes even with SmackDown in 18 to 34 for a long time. Um they were doing that, but they would get killed in 35 to 49. And then at one point, they actually were, were neck and neck for a while there, but um, with men, but they could never catch up. With the, the, the one advantage that Raw would, or Raw and SmackDown had, which was the reason that AEW never fully caught up, and this is in the punk era when the ratings were a lot closer, was the women 35 to 49. They could never get the women audience in that age group, but they could get the men. I mean, they could beat WWE for men. They could beat WWE for 18 to 34. Um, didn't always beat them, but they could, they were always competitive with them. And then, you know, each went the other direction. You know, I mean, well, WWE I think each went, went the other up. direction because the product, particularly, it, it mostly WWE's product. I mean, it it did a turnaround. Well, one one was the one became the hot promotion, and the other one didn't. Is well, what happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole reason that AEW took off, one of the big reasons was because of how horrible WWE was. Abs- absolutely. And they had driven off so many people, and those people chose to watch AEW. And once the WWE product stopped being so horrible and began the turnaround, I think that there were a lot of fans that wanted to like WWE, but WWE made it impossible for them to do so. And when WWE stopped making it impossible for them, they went back and started watching WWE again. And now well, Tony is fighting from underneath against a company hard. that's not driving people off in droves anymore. That's true. And it's a company that's eight times bigger than they are. Um, and again, you know, like when, when there was a period where they were going neck and neck in attendance, um, you know, if you went to the shows of each company, and, and the AEW fan base was a lot louder and a lot more enthusiastic than the WWE fan base then. I mean, you go to the two shows, and the, the AEW show's the better show. Um, it's, it's always a you know, better wrestling show, better. I mean, WWE, I think, had certain advantages even then. But, um, but you know, AEW would have the better wrestling show, and they'd the, the more lively crowd and everything like that. When the 
WWE crowds went up. So this would be uh, essentially really when uh, right around the time Cody Rhodes left. And then the Cody, obviously, you know, the Cody Rhodes thing was big. Um, and it's in, it's really interesting, you know, when you look back because Brian Danielson at his peak was way bigger in WWE than Cody Rhodes was prior to this. You know, like, you know, not even, you can't even compare them. Um, you know, Punk was very big, obviously. Um, but when, when Danielson, as big as he was, when he came to AEW, and him and Punk came at the same time, and Brian Danielson's a better wrestler than Punk, but Punk, Punk meant more. There's no doubt about it. Punk meant more. Well, you want to know why I think that is? Why was Danielson so over? What was his peak when he was in WWE? His peak was that one WrestleMania run. Exactly. When he was going after the title. Yeah. Okay. Well, when Brian Danielson went to AEW, he's never really been in the title picture. No, he hasn't. He's been more concerned about getting well, well, everybody he, else over. Well, well, he did. He did with Max, but that's the only time. But he, he wasn't the champion. No, he's never been the he champion. He was in a title feud, which he then lost, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Sam Punk came in, and it was all about getting the AEW title. You're right. So I think that, you know, I don't know. But, but Punk, Punk... And Cody, Punk's... Cody walked into WWE, and what was the first thing? He had that, that feud with Seth Rollins, and they began a two-year journey to him getting the title. It's so yeah. all built around the title. It was all built around the title, absolutely. Yes. So I yeah. think that that's the big difference between Danielson going to AEW and Cody going back to WWE. Yeah. One guy went back to be the top star and was portrayed that way, and the other guy was pushed, you know, but he was never the guy. He was never put in the position to be the guy. He was always a lesser guy putting over other guys Yeah. in great matches. So I think that's a big difference. I think people want to see guys go for the title. Yeah, but at first... Punk was more over when he came over, even before they well, started Well, it was also journeys. because he'd been gone from he'd been, well, wrestling be, forever and debuted in Chicago. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, it was true. very well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How they did that. But, um, you know, um, but there is something in the sense of, um, I, I mean, it's a different fan base, too. It just is a different fan base. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.